Mike Police from Police Auto has uh, become a friend of ours over the years. It's good to have him back. He's in the studio with us right now. Good Great to see you. to be here, guys. How are you? Very good. Um, you and I have had some conversations in, in the uh, very recent past uh, of a situation that cropped up. You said you would like to come on in here and talk about yes. if for no other reason than to bring some awareness to an issue. And uh, I invite you to do that now. All right, great. So I'll just I'll cut to the chase as quickly as I can and be sort of clinical about it. Because once you explain this thing a million times, you just have to be. Uh, Mid-September, I was diagnosed with uh, stage four stomach cancer. And uh, <coughs> the guys at uh, uh, Dana-Farber, who are the best in the field uh, at what they do, said you have eight to 12 months to live on average. So that's a pretty unique perspective to live uh, life from, but it's not that unique. There's a lot of people who get, uh, you know, a similar diagnosis every day. So I guess kind of what's in it for me is, hey, I got to tell a billion people to listen to your radio station right now and get it out of my system. So it's a million people I don't have to tell when I see them in the, you know, in the streets and the halls at work and all that kind of stuff. But also, you know, just to, to give some, <clears throat> you know, some perspective and, and to, not necessarily, you know, help a, a victim, but, you know, whether you're the sister-in-law or brother-in-law or friend of somebody who's going through this, uh, it's just a, something that isn't really talked about a lot. So I have a couple of things that, you know, you might be interested uh, in hearing. And, uh, heck, we can even take uh, phone calls from people who just want to say, I'm glad you got it because my car stinks that I got <laughs> so, so, so does this mean the two-year loan I have now, I only have to pay yeah, half of Only as long as I'm alive, you're fine. <laughs> After yeah. that, he doesn't care. Yeah, you know my what? collection ability goes right down the toilet when I, I'm gone. I do want to just bring up the, the personal aspect of this. I knew that you was, I knew there was something wrong uh, before we went to Vegas. You told me that you were having some stomach issues. You told me that you were going in for tests. Uh, we went to Vegas. We had a great time. Shortly after we came back from Vegas, you informed me of this. Yes. And uh, and I was just, I, I'm just blown away and, and have been since. And, you know, I, I, when I think about what I went through, and as you've already mentioned, you're stage four. <clears throat> uh, the idea of knowing somebody who just drops that kind of information on you that you had no uh, inkling of is just, it's, it's, it's mind boggling. And I can't even imagine how it is for the family. I mean, I don't have children. I, I, I wasn't married at the time. Right, right, right. Um, you know, the you whole know, family is, is dealing with it. It is. It, yeah, it's not just you. That's probably the worst part, right? You're dragging everybody else in. I have a, a 12-year-old, a, a 19-year-old with uh, severe autism, and a 20-year-old, so nobody's having fun. My wife is probably in the, uh, the most misery, right, trying to come up with any concoction that she can to, to save me, and she's really a, a trooper and awesome so yeah it, it's not fun when you first hear it you just keep trying to figure out a way out of the box it's like mm -hmm. you're a caged rat and you know the rat doesn't just sit in the corner and wait till it dies right it's sniffing every corner of that cage trying to get out so you know i think anybody who knows someone who's going through it the first like week two or a month that is the most painful because you're just trying to come up with some level of acceptance and then you know for me it, it I do have that acceptance right now. It doesn't mean I'm resigned to it and I'm not going to fight it like crazy, but you but, do kind of get used to but it. But when you told me, you said to me, you yeah. said, you know, and we talked about this very day, and yeah. you said, I, I want to do this like you did, like you handled yours. I yeah. want to use a sense of humor. I want to be open about it. I don't want to hide and, and, and be, you know, all stuck within myself. And I said, hey, listen, the, the sense of humor is great. And I will tell you this, too. Although you're married, I yeah. understand that. The... Uh, ability to get chicks once you announce publicly that you have cancer unbelievable yeah, well, unbelievable, unbelievable. I, I don't know I if go that's right what he's to saying. the cancer card and if that doesn't work i even try the race card you now. see you know I mean? <laughs> <laughs> i'll do anything I got, I got nothing to lose this is mike police from police auto in the studio i was i was gonna say that because you know i i think it's not to diminish anyone who has cancer or any or any kind of disease we all have our uh our various issues within our families where uh, you know, we're moved by uh, what people go through. But the fact that you want to come on here and, and talk about something that, that, that is very personal and, and with finality, uh, I have to respect your decision to come on because I think many people would be just <coughs> afraid to do so. Um, but I, I have to give you credit because we talked well, during the Thursday Night Live show uh, about uh, you know, how you were doing. And I, your spirits are high. I mean, you're, you've been... I think very strong during this. I'm sure day after day, you know, day by day, 
that fluctuates quite a lot. But I have to tell you, I I respect the way you've handled this so far. Well, thanks. Uh, and you know, hey, I'm 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 new to this. I'm two and a half months in. Hopefully, it'll go a lot longer than what what they project. Um, but I'm. Hey, I'm friendly with you guys. I enjoy you guys both very much, so I don't feel like a stranger here, as, as you discuss. And, hey, I'm a product of Western Mass, Northern Connecticut, so I, I feel really at home, you know, talking to people here. And my way of dealing with anything that I don't like is to talk about it. It seems like when you talk about your problems and the issues, they kind of go away, right? The right. in the room you kind of talk about. Um, but uh, getting back, to, first of all, I got to say, <clears throat> whenever you're dealing with a doctor, and they ask you, tell me what you know about your diagnosis, that's not a good sign. Because every single doctor I, I, I've encountered said that. So I have to give a shout out to my doctor. I got his permission, Dr. Rodney Larson in Agawam. He's awesome. Regular country doctor, right? My regular GP guy. He uh, went, to, you know, got the biopsies, researched my biopsies, and actually called the guy's down at the Dana Farber and was kind of giving them what for, you know, why aren't you using this targeting technique, this, that, and the other thing. We really went above and beyond. And the best thing that he did for me, so I went and I had, you know, my endoscopy. The guy did, you know, basically while I was just coming out of the ether, he's like, oh, yeah, by the way, you have a, a tumor in your stomach. You're going to want to get it uh, handled. And did right? you say cancer is a cancer? Do I have cancer? I Well, actually, I was like, did you do the procedure yet? Can I use a cancer card already? Uh, but this guy called me up. I'm at my mother's house, right? Take care of my mother. He calls me up two days after the endoscopy. He goes, what did they tell you about your diagnosis? I go, well, they said it was cancer, but I don't know if it's malignant or not. I, you know, they got to send it in, in for testing. He's like... Buddy, you're getting ready to go 12 rounds with Mike Tyson, and you've never been to the gym, the, the gym to train. You're in for a fist fight. That was the greatest thing anybody could tell me, because at least I knew what I had. So, so thanks, Dr. Larson. He has been great. But boy, you know, if I when I look at my life, I'm I'm coming up on 50, and uh, it's been 50 not good years. It's been 50 great years. Sure, but we've all had you know stuff happen. But part of the way that I cope is, I think, okay. Everybody's living out the rest of their life, right? Could be somebody tomorrow falls off a truck or whatever. Right. I had 50 great years. Um, <clears throat> one thing that I think is a good piece of advice I want to get out there, do the hard stuff first. If something like this happens, you're probably only going to feel worse as things go along. So do the hard stuff first. So I leave here today to meet with lawyers and do wills and all that kind of stuff. It's not fun, but once it's done, I can concentrate on, on, on all the stuff that I want to do. Um, and you know, I th also thought about, uh, I, I, I'll, I won't brag myself, but my uh, uncle, uh, got the silver star at 18 years old, dying in Wessel, Germany at the battle of the bulge. The guy gave everything right at 18. Mm. So here I am at 50. There's kids next to me getting chemo at Dana Farber. I really got nothing to complain about. So, yeah. uh, that's yeah. kind of the way I look at it. Well, yeah. And your personality, I think has a lot to do with it also. I mean, clearly, uh, you know, the difference between stages three and four, I wasn't looking at it, uh, quite as deeply as you are, but my, you know, my personality wouldn't necessarily lend itself to being as, as upbeat as, as I know you to be, even in just the, uh, the year or so that we've really gotten to know each other. But, uh, that also, I think helps for those people around you, um, because they know this is genuine. This is your real personality. You're not putting on airs to make other people feel better. You genuinely feel good for yourself despite despite the condition. Yeah, I mean, I, I think uh, I have some great mentors. My, my brother is my ultimate mentor and the guy I looked up to the most in the world. And uh, he really helps me keep things in perspective and my wife and, you know, and my kids too. And, and like I say, I'm lucky. I got 50 great years, and who knows? I could be here in 55, and you'll be going, Belize, you told me I only had to pay another year in my car. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so well, I really got nothing to feel to feel is, bad about. It is a family business, so while you may not be knocking on the door, your brother uh, and some creditors will, too. Yeah, but I think John can outrun my brother. <laughs> uh, you know, but, uh, hey, hopefully I'll be, I will be here, hopefully talking about Valley Gives, Toys for Tots. We have a, another trip planned, which uh, certainly is not being scrapped by any uh, stretch of the imagination. It's not. No. Okay. No, 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 no. But we are changing the location now. We are going to the Tropic of Cancer. Oh, uh, we are? Yeah, yes. Yeah, very that's good. Not... <laughs> you are a miserable very bastard. Good. <laughs> poor man. What's wrong with you? Yes. That would be uh, that would be one place we could think of. There's got to be others. <laughs> this guy, I'm sure you'll come up yeah. with something after after a while. Um, you know, the only, only other thing I wanted to talk about, and I've, I'm not very far into this whole, whole process, though, 
Uh, chemo is not as much fun as they make it out to be. <laughs> as you well know, you did your uh, uh, your chemo for for nine months, three days a week. Right? Well, you were at the we we're at the live show a couple of weeks ago, and and you come up to us. I said, you know, how's it going? I said, well, actually, I. This chemo is great. I feel uh, terrific. <laughs> I never felt better in my life. Well, actually, the results for this type of cancer, the results were amazing. They, I, I feel a lot better you know, once it's over with. But, boy, if you have anybody in your family going through it, and I know everybody's different, but I would just suggest this. Just leave the person alone. Like, the mm-hmm. best thing my family could do for me, and it actually precipitated a big fight with my wife. She's trying so hard to ask me questions. Can I get this? Can I do that? Can I do this? It drove me crazy because it takes so much effort, as you know, right? right? It's yeah. exhausting. Yeah. John described, uh, you know, the treatments as like you have the, the worst case of the flu. That's kind of what it's like. You just, you have no energy. So it was just trying to explain to her with some patience, the best thing you can do is just leave me in the crawl space with a pillow for yeah. the next few days. Right. Yeah. And then I'll come out uh, uh, pretty well. And the other weird thing that they didn't tell me is smells and everything you like you thought you liked you don't like and kind of the opposite yeah. is true too but my dog you're talking about dog this morning i have a 15 pound little uh rescued dog that is the i love this little creature the smell of that dog after chemo oh my god just about you know it would just about make me wretch and of course what does the dog want to do yeah you want Follow to get close the house, and, yeah. right? lick your face yeah. <clears throat> and my my 12 year old is picking up the dog bringing it to me i'm like oh please just keep the dog away from me so that's a, a, a bizarre thing and smells like my wife brushing her, her teeth mm. thank god i love the smell of whatever she was you know peppermint or spearmint yeah. but it was though someone came up to me in bed and put it under my nose. But you told me before she had horrible smelling breath Very, to begin with. Never yeah. flosses. Yeah. <laughs> the fact that she used that toothbrush was unbelievable. It took her 25 years to unwrap it. But hey, at least she's using it now. Not the bristle end, but no, it's getting we, close. You gotta start with something or another. <laughs> all, yeah. all baby steps. Well, yeah. I'm glad I'm glad to hear that we're, you know, that we're looking at that trip uh down the road and and um Again, you know, your spirits are great. You, you talk about the chemo, but you, you actually came into one of the work releases a few weeks back, and yeah. I think it was your second day on the stuff. Yeah. And you're wearing uh, you're wearing a pack that, that you're receiving it through a port that way, right? Right, right. So I have a, a port in my chest because it's got to go through a, a bigger vein or else, you know, the stuff will burn up, up a small vein. So I go in, I get infused for four to six hours, depending on how much of the medicines I can take because it does raise your blood pressure. So that's... Uh, kind of hindered me like it does a lot of people as, as we progress and, and they'll hopefully get that under uh, control. But I do six hours in the hospital, then 46 hours with this pump you mm. know, that uh, you don't really feel it. You know, it's no big deal. I think it makes quite a fashion statement. They got me yeah. chartreuse and black yeah. <laughs> uh, last time. And well, that's what I mean. your shoes. Those, yeah, it went well. And went you came well. into the work release, and I just thought that was your flask, because I know you usually carry one of those, too. And so. I use a port for yeah, that yeah. as well. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, all the swallowing and mixing really gets tedious, yeah, and the results are much faster. <laughs> yeah. Mike Gleese, it's uh, it's good to see you. I'm sure right, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll keep I will be touch. around darkening good. your door. Thanks, Absolutely. guys. Absolutely. Bax and O'Brien and uh, Mike Police at Rock 102.